What's up guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how there are so many rich kids online these days and how they're making their money. I'm sure you have scrolled through social media at some point and it doesn't take very many scrolls on TikTok or Instagram before you've come across a person who's 18 to 20 years old and they've already seems to have won at life, right? They already seem to have got the Lamborghini. They already seem to have an amazing lifestyle, a huge house as well, but and they're so young. And that is very motivating for a lot of people out there, but it's also very demotivating for others because a lot of people have worked their entire lives and don't seem to have a single fraction of the wealth that this person who's pretty much only just turned working age has now got. So we're gonna be looking through a Reddit thread and seeing what everyone thinks about this. We have a, a person called Appropriate Stage 25, who is a tech founder and has grown two seven-figure businesses, investor, mental health advocate. And they ask, how are all these young kids getting rich? I follow an exotic car dealerships page on Instagram, and whenever someone buys a car, there's always a post uh, of a pic of the person who bought the car standing next to the new car. Lately, I've been seeing that most of the people buying Lambos, Ferraris, McLarens are kids that look like they're in their teens or early 20s. I seen a kid today that was 19 that bought a Lambo. You know what I was doing at 19? Keg stands and blacking out in bushes. I sure as hell wasn't growing businesses and buying supercars. What the hell are these kids doing these days to be making that kind of money so early in life? Now I've owned a cool car in the past, the Huracan, in my profile picture, but fell on hard times two years ago when my construction company went under and I got rid of it. Now it's been a hard grind to get back to that financial level. The thing is, I'm in my mid thirties and I just feel like now, only now I know enough about business to have pretty predictable success with uh, new ventures. And I came from working for big companies and being obsessed with learning how they operate and learning from multiple failed ventures of my own along the way. I didn't know in my 20s, there's no way I could have grown enough to be buying cars like that back then. I know these kids don't have the real world experience to really know how to run a business. So how are so many of them making so money, so much money? And before we dive into the comments, I'm actually similar age to this person. And I had a similar experience as well when I was in my early 20s. That's what I was concerned about as well. You know, I was concerned about dating. I was concerned about um, finishing uni as well. I was concerned about what I should be doing with my life. And I was concerned about partying as well. And I used to never see people at all talking about wealth and talking about money. Like it wasn't really a thing back then to be talking about it so much, but now everyone seems to be talking about it and saying it's very easy to do as well. So here's the comments. We've got Bunch of Crunch 22 who says, uh, crypto, YouTube, rich parents, ripping off people one way or another. Probably one of those three. Probably quite a cynical outlook, to be honest with you. Ganush says, having rich parents is the way to do this. Um, Jairo Bjornstad says, I went to high school with the daughter of a man who owned or was the main investor to 80% of a small business in my town. On her 16th birthday, he bought her a BMW. She now runs one of the businesses her father owns. It certainly makes things much easier to be born into wealth. That's what I see with a lot of young, wealthy individuals and families. You think children of rich folks all around like Paris Hilton just live life like it's a permanent vacation, but many of them work very hard. It's just that they were able to start at a much higher level due to nepotism. So you can see there's a lot of people here who are saying having rich parents is like one of the key factors and there's actually a little bit of truth to it. If you get two self-made millionaires, one is, you know, grew up in the uh, Hollywood Hills, right? And came from money. And you get the other one who maybe grew up in a very, very poor country, maybe in the slums in a poor country, couldn't even afford a laptop. Who do you think has had the tougher struggle? It's probably the person who grew up in the slums, right? But who do you think actually had the bigger drive and will to do it? And does that actually matter? Well, you would think public perception in a way seems to say that the person who grew up broke 
would have their back against the wall mentality, would be way hungrier and would therefore more likely achieve success, right? And that is generally the public's perception on these things, right? And the, the other perception is that the person who grew up in a cushy sort of environment would actually be lazy and therefore, you know, maybe even struggle to and motivate themselves and even if they did achieve some success maybe they just let it all slip that's what the average public perception um, says but unfortunately that is completely wrong there was a study which was done by a data scientist a few years ago and he looked at all of the people who um, got into the nba right and they found that the people who got into the MBA seemed to all come from middle class families or above. It was actually very, very rare for someone who grew up in a lower class to get into the MBA. So why is this? Well, actually, um, a person who has grew up with a semi comfortable, you know, upbringing doesn't only have money, they actually have opportunities they've learned how to communicate with other people, they have got way bigger um, tolerance of risk because they have more to lose, but they also have this extra cushion, this extra padding, right? They've also don't self-sabotage as much, and this is what the um, study found, they don't self-sabotage as much because basically they are used to being money. So when I first started doing sales calls, you know, I'm not ashamed to say I grew up in quite um, a poor family. When I started to do it high ticket sales calls, it was very tough for me to ask for a lot of money from people. It had like, I had to work my way up the ladder a little bit. I couldn't just suddenly ask for a 10 grand contract, um, to, you know, a 10 grand payment for some sort of job. I couldn't do it. And the reason why is I just wasn't used to asking for that much money straight away. Um, and I had to work my way up to that. So coming from a rich family definitely increases your chances, even indirectly, if they don't give you any money, of being more successful, right? It's measured. And there's that old saying that the rich get richer. And, you know, there's some truth to that as well. Another person says, you're just seeing the 1%. The 1% counts for a lot of people plus 1% uh, of people who are mega rich. 1% of the US population is about 3.3 million people. That's roughly half a million more than the population of Chicago, all of which having a net worth of over 10 million each. It's a good point. So people only tend to show their highlight reel, right? And only the people who are posting their cars just happens to be the ones who have actually made it. So survivorship bias as well. Income of 652 grand is or more is considered top 1%, yet yeah, even after taxes, it still can't buy a 400 grand Lambo. The thing is, like, people don't, it's a silly business decision to actually go out there and, and buy um, a Lamborghini or, you know, some sort of ex exotic car. I don't know a single person who's got money who actually buys the cars. They all, you know, lease them for two years at a time, right? And they pay a monthly amount. And this person is actually talking about it here. A, le a lease runs three to six grand a month. So it's much more affordable that way because if you've got a depreciating asset, um, first of all, you know, the value is continuously going down on a car. And as well, you know, if you use the Lamborghini in your social media, you can be paying three to six grand a month, which is far more affordable. But you can also be using that as a tax write off as well which is something that a lot of people don't talk about. So not only are you protected from um, depreciation, right? You are also trimming down on the income tax that you actually have to pay. It's a smart, smart decision um, as long as you can make the argument that you're using it perhaps, you know, to advertise things or, you know, it's part of, um, it's part of a business expense, right? Bandersnatch says, Hiya, I'm in the 1% and I have what in the 80s would have been called a middle-class life. If my kids want a Lambo, they better grind that paper route. Wealthy people always trying to claim that they are actually middle class, laughing my ass off. Surely you're not mega wealthy like the 0.1%, but you're a far cry away from the middle class, even by 80 standards, laughing my ass off. Even if you LARP as middle class and don't live conspicuously, just own it. So it's quite funny, that is. Everyone, if you ask anyone, it doesn't matter if they're really, really rich, they've all got this compelling story about how they've struggled and made it. And a lot of people believe this own story, even though 
um, because the, from their perception, they did also have challenges as well. But it gets a little bit more insidious than this because you will have noticed in the make money online industry, every single person, every single entrepreneur who's selling some sort of course has got the backstory of starting with nothing and being completely broke and having nothing, nothing at all, not even two pennies to rub together. And they suddenly applied the techniques which are now packaged in the course, which they're trying to sell you, and they're gonna sell those techniques to you because it helped them become a millionaire and therefore it will help you become a millionaire. That is something called the availability bias. And when we tell stories and appear as very, very similar to other people, uh, the information is readily available to us. We actually listen more to information which is exactly the same as us. And it's a great way of actually building rapport with an audience is just to appear very, very similar to them. Funny story, actually, I know three make money online influencers who have got huge audiences. I'm talking over a million people in their audiences, right? And they've all got these compelling backstories about how they started from nothing and they had no money, didn't even have two pennies to rub together and now suddenly they're rich and uh, by applying some of these principles. And I'm in circles and I know some of these guys' real backstories. And let me tell you, these guys didn't start with nothing. In fact, they actually had quite a lot of money when they were first starting out, but they don't tell you that, right? And they don't tell you that, first of all, to sell you the dream, but also because they know that you buying a course of someone who's already come from wealth is actually, it's never gonna sell right. They'll, they'll actually get more hate than probably the hate they're getting right now. Just a side tangent there, but uh, you just gotta, you gotta be aware of the marketing tactics. And if you start hearing, you know, some rumors about a, a person, maybe there is no smoke without fire. Fastest way to become a millionaire is to have billionaires for parents, yes. Reminds me of Kevin Hart, can a woman make a man a millionaire? Yes, if he is a billionaire. I made it to sea level at 40 and make enough money now to live in high-end areas. I was shocked to find 99% of people in these affluent areas come from family money. Thought I'd find others like me who grew up poor and made it. Nope, except maybe some rare ones that are 70 plus. I feel like a unicorn. This makes me realize when you see people with money that are middle age or younger, pretty much guarantee it's family money. The American dream feels like a fake concept created to hide that the fact from the rest of us. Dog Butt Whisperer says, there is no meritocracy. Money makes money. We need more rags to riches stories though, more morality and values and less princes and princesses. And Dog Butt Whisperer does actually have a bit of a point there. Stories inspire people and they inspire people to try new things all the time. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. If there is a story out there of a famous person going from rags to riches, then think how many people are gonna be inspired by that because they're gonna be like, well, I can actually do that too. So it is still needed. The dog butt whisper is absolutely right. Cool username, bro. Nadeson95 says, I, I want to debunk the rich parents theory to all of you wanting to make excuses. Here's my backstory. I'm 28, I tried a lot of things and made stupid decisions. Went to college, got the high paying consultant job and it's a friggin' joke where there's no value to add. I ventured into the world of online business, failed and learned in 1.5 years. Today, I've learned that attention equals money, now built an audience of over 91,000 on social media and making plus 20,000 in 4.5 months of focus. It's hard to know whether he means plus 20,000 a month or plus 20,000 in actually just four months, so about five grand a month. There's a ton of people younger than me that I've had the pleasure of meeting along the way and now it's always the rich parent syndrome. But there are a lot of scammy people out there. The 40% who are legit know how to play the attention game and that's why they're winning. I live in South Africa and grew up in poverty when we lost everything. Don't be a victim to your circumstances and play the rich parent card. Your mindset is everything. What the heck says, setting aside the many ego-preserving negative responses in this thread, some of which do have merit, Rich parents, there are simply are people who become extremely wealthy at young ages through entrepreneurship. How do they do it? The obvious answer is just, they started way earlier than you and they've been taking tons of action for some sub substantial amounts of time. Some people do get lucky and strike gold on their first business perhaps, but the reality is almost all of these young 
people who are self-made millionaires in their 20s in all probability have been working their absolute ass off to turn that into a dream uh, reality since kids. Plenty of stories, plenty of stories of successful software entrepreneurs, for example, who started writing code literally as children. What might look like overnight success is 10 to 15 years of work. Again, yes, some get lucky, but a critical thing to realize is that overall in the aggregate, especially if you're starting in a Western society as a healthy person surrounded by opportunity, the world is extremely fair. It's extremely fair in the sense that your results are the direct product of your actions. The circumstances you experience in life are just pure cause and effect. That's a very simple concept, yet it's remarkable how few people actually grasp it and comprehend it working in their own lives. As Brian Tracy often points out, if you do what other successful people do, you will eventually get the same results. Just take a lot more of the actions over a sustained period and you absolutely can and will turn your goals into reality. And yet there's a certain aspect of truth to that as well. A lot of people tend to make excuses for why other people have things that they don't. And they do this to protect their own ego. So they say, well, that person grew up in rich circumstances. That person put a lot of money on crypto and ended up looking out, right? Or, you know, that person got given money by their family and they do it so that they're making an excuse for why they don't have those things. And that's a tough position to be in. And it's easy to do that as well. And also as well, the bigger the gap between the person who you are right now, like your circumstances versus the person who you're viewing and how successful they are, particularly if you haven't been exposed to more successful people, the more likely you're gonna question them and be super cynical and be negative about them because it protects your own ego. You're like, they've managed to achieve X because they have Y, which is more than what I have, right? And you end up making those excuses there. But, you know, there's mixed reviews on this, and I think it's a bit of both. I think people, guys in particular, have a tendency to flaunt their wealth when they get it. If you look at evolutionary psychology, it's a term of display of peacocking, right? showing their status of the things which they've managed to afford so that it gives them access to mates and makes them seem more important in society as well. There's also an aspect of people who absolutely have had a higher step up in life. But then you are also, also going to have that group of people who have worked very hard to get what they want. Maybe they've had a lucky break pretty early. Maybe, you know, they're 21 years old and they have been working on a business since in four years. From what I've seen, there's definitely a mix of it there. But the stories of kids getting really, really rich when they're young, it is more unlikely that that has happened purely through them. And also you could argue the sharing of information now is way, way better, which means people, even as young as, as soon as they can access YouTube and physically type it into their computer or their phone, they can now get information on guides of how to build some sort of business, whether it's e-com drop shipping, a service-based business. And maybe now they're actually using it at a much younger age as well. So that's something to take into consideration. But what do you guys think? How do you guys think that kids these days, young kids are getting so, so rich? Let me know in the comments below. Take it easy.